All right. What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's session in our journey to unlock greatness. I am super pumped to be back again, to continue to be able to share these topics, these concepts, these ideas with you all. Um, if you drop in, if you come in, say what's up. If you're watching this recording after the fact, drop a comment and share what you like. Just share with us that you were here or you are here. All right, uh, we're going to dive right in today. I want to make sure that we're continuing to keep this content uh, as tight, as clear, as direct as we possibly can. <clears throat> so uh, let's dive right into the topic. I want to make sure that all of our stuff is going well. All right, so today um, in, in this specific session, uh, again, as we're talking about this opportunity uh, to unlock our greatness, this is a transformational journey. This is a uh, um, this is a something that it takes time. This takes effort. This takes work. And by the way, this is also not a linear journey. Uh, this is something that we are going to continue to have to work on uh, day in and day out for the rest of our lives, this side of eternity. And so uh, we need to be in it to win it. We have to make sure, and we'll talk about this in weeks to come, but we have to make sure that we have our eye on the prize and the prize that we have our eye on is in fact a prize that we deeply desire, that we are truly motivated uh, to, to achieve, uh, not just greatness in the sense of, oh, I'm this great person and I've accomplished all these things, but, but what does life look like? And so we just need to make sure that we have a clear picture of what that is. Today specifically, uh, we are going to talk about what it means to accept help on this journey of transformation, accepting help for your transformation. Now, we typically run in two camps here. There's two uh, kind of different ways that people look at these things. Uh, one, one, one side of this equation is, and this is very much how I was for a long period of my life, is uh, I've got this. I've got it dialed in. I'm an independent person. I'm a self-starter. Uh, I can push my way through. I can fight the battle. Uh, so again, a, a whole lot of independence. Um, sometimes you're born that way. Other times you've had to learn to be that way. You just felt like you can't depend on people. The other side of the equation um, in, in this whole idea of asking for help or accepting help is that we feel like we can't do anything on our own. And so, uh, uh we want to make sure that we find this balance, understanding that, uh, it's our life, it's our goal. Uh, it, it, it is our journey, our dream and our desire. Hopefully, uh, we believe that this has been given to us by God and we're, so we're clear as to the direction. Uh, I guess in that manner, we're never completely independent because God is always with us um, as we continue to become more and more uh, like the men and women that he has created us to be. But um, we, we, we need to recognize something. So I'm going to go back to what I said earlier about myself, and I'm going to share with you uh, a, a little story uh, before we get into the meat of this. By the way, the meat of this. So I want to talk about a couple of things specifically, uh, and really uh, what I want to do is I want to help you identify the resources that are going to help you on your journey of transformation. And then I want to give you some techniques to seek, accept, and engage in the help necessary to go get those things. So uh, again, identifying resources and then ultimately understand and build the techniques uh, to go out and, and grasp them for ourselves. Okay, so let me tell you a little story here uh, because I've had to learn the hard way, uh, meaning um, I, I this isn't something that was ingrained into me. I, I As much as I was a team sport guy, play basketball, play baseball. Um, I don't know. I, I was just, I was very individualistic. There was a part of me that was required to survive from very early on. Um, I kind of rose to the occasion of leader in many of the circles that I was in, which was cool. It was great. Uh, but at the same time, um, it created a, a sense of independence that got me into a lot of trouble. And that trouble was this. As my life started to crumble uh, as I started to get myself into some trouble, make some poor decisions. I felt like I had it under control. Like uh, I, I could deal with this all myself. 
And that fast forwarded all the way through to even after I came to faith, even after community was around me, um, I went through the season of life where I, um, on the back end of the 2008 recession, starting my own business, I found myself uh, and my family found themselves uh, because in large part me, um, in a place where we were struggling financially, it, exceptionally poorly or badly. The, the struggle was real, real, real. And as we were struggling, I continued to feel like I could do everything myself. I continued to feel like I had it. I was independent. I could deal with it. I could fight through it. I could figure it out. And for me, the lesson came when I finally started to lose it all. Ultimately losing my house, losing so many of the toys and fun things that we had acquired for ourselves. Like it was all gone. And I had no more means by which to get myself out of it. And I had to start accepting help. And that help came in some incredible ways, literal gifts, financial gifts, practical gifts, all kinds of things that helped my family get back onto our feet. That was from family. That was from friends. That was from so many people. And so that was one lesson for me uh, that made me recognize I was not put on this earth. And I don't believe any one of us is put on this earth to forge a path fully on our own. I don't believe any one of us was put on this earth with a sole mission and purpose that excludes anybody else. I truly believe that we were created communally to be around, surrounded by other people, to lift us up, to support us, to encourage us and the such. So what does that mean for you? Well, here are, here are three different areas that I want to talk about that I think will be extremely helpful for you. And I'll give you some other anecdotes as I go, because again, this has been the experience of my life. Uh, one of the greatest challenges of my life was understanding to accept help and, and walking through that. So first up is the role of, and hopefully I've started to explain this, but the role of coaches, mentors, and communities on our journey of transformation. So I talked about mentors, I talked about coaches, and I talked about communities. And so I just want to highlight those three specifically. And you may be saying to yourself, well, I have a friend um, or my family or my spouse. Those can all be incredible support systems for you. But there is one potential deficiency in those that arises in far greater um, frequency than in any other space. And it's this, those closest to you, your family, your friends, more often than not, they have a hard time telling you the hard truth. And on top of that, experientially, they don't always, they haven't always been on the same journey as you. And so it can be difficult to give you the advice, the guidance and accountability necessary to move forward. So a mentor, somebody that has gone before you, somebody that has done it, somebody that has accomplished it, somebody that's been through that season of life, walked that journey, and their role is to help to be a guide, to provide guidance, insight, and wisdom to lead you on your journey. For you to be able to share the experiences that you've had and that you're going through and doing so in a manner that allows them to provide you the feedback necessary for you to continue on that journey. Secondly, coaches. Um, this isn't just because I'm a coach, uh, though I am a coach, but I value coaches so much. I have my own. I've had multiple in the past, sometimes for specific need, other times for my general business and or life. But coaches are primarily a professional that has had the experience you are looking to develop. We have a big problem in society today where people love to give advice. 
And just because you've read a book or watched a video does not mean that you have the experience necessary to give the advice. And so we have a lot of quote unquote coaches out there that aren't actually coaches. They are people that are regurgitating information that they've read. And so a coach in my mind is a professional that you hire that has had the experience you are looking to experience that can walk you through the journey that they have been on to get you to the destination that you're after. That doesn't mean they have to have the expertise in every single area, but their experience or life experience or business experience, their relational experience lends to giving you advice based upon experience and developed wisdom, not learned education. I'm not saying learned ed education is a bad thing. I'm just saying that too often we believe that if I just consume information and regurgitate it, that's enough to call myself a coach. And I just don't believe it is. And so my encouragement to you is if you're looking for a coach, make sure that they uh, experientially align with where you're trying to go. One of the questions is, have you done what I'm about to do? Do you have experience in the things that I'm trying to experience? If the answer is no, and they can't articulate that clearly, that's probably not a coach or at least not a good coach for you. And then finally, community. So you are here because you are in a community, the Unlocking Greatness community. And we are on this journey together to transform our wounds into strengths and ultimately be, to become the men and women that God has created us to be. Communities function best when it is like-minded individuals that all that put their whole self into the pot, to put their whole self into the room, into the whole self into the community because they want to lend all of their life to the betterment of others and they want to gain from as many people as possible in the community. They want to build one another up. They want to encourage one another. They want to support one another. They want to hold one another accountable. That's what a community is for. And that's how a community functions best. I can give you example after example about the benefits of each one of these, because um, um, I, I made the mistake of um, separating myself again, because I was so independent from mentors, coaches, and communities for the first couple decades of my life. It wasn't until I was in my mid-30s before I started to formally engage into these things. Um, but as I have, I can tell you that I have a couple of specific mentors in my life. I've spoke of some of them before. A spiritual mentor and leader. Uh, his name is Nick. And Nick has was there for me when I stepped into pastoral ministry and leadership in that capacity. And he had gone before me and done it before me. We were similar age, but he had so much more experience. And he just walked through some of the most incredibly difficult times of my, uh, of my life with me. Um, but he helped me on that journey mentors, coaches. I've hired multiple coaches. I had a business and life coach. Uh, my first one that I professionally engaged with was a man that was twice my age, but he had gone before me. He had experienced, he had succeeded, he had failed, and he was able to show me the way. And I was paying him to do so. And finally, communities. I'm a part of many different communities. I have a community of brothers, men at my church that surround me, that pour into me, that hold me accountable. And I deeply love and care for them. We're in a community group, my wife and myself. And uh, every single week we meet together and we process our faith and the, and, and the outworkings of that in that community setting. And they're there to lift us up and support us. I'm in a mastermind. I pay to be a part of that. This is with high level, high achievers that are like-minded, that are all on the same journey to success. And we're lending to one another in that capacity. So I, I just, I cannot emphasize how important mentors, coaches, and communities are to your professional and personal journeys to transformation. I just, I can't, I can't sell the idea enough. They're so incredibly important, but I know I'm no fool to knowing that one thing that stands in the way is the things that stand in the way. There are some common roadblocks that come to mind for me when I think about this idea of engaging with a mentor, a coach, or even a community. Sometimes it's pride. 
That was actually me at 28 years old. One of uh, the CEO I was working for at the time, uh, he came up to me and I was killing it. I was in the top two of my company in sales. I was doing super well. And he came to me one day and he said, Ryan, he said, I really believe that you could use a mentor. And I turned around and I looked him in the face and I chuckled. And I said, you have to be kidding me. You think I need a mentor? And he shook me off, was disappointed, turned around and walked away. That cost me so much in my career by not taking that seriously. But I was just too prideful. I was already good. I didn't need anybody's help. I was such a fool, such a fool. Pride is not the only thing though. Sometimes it's a fear of vulnerability. Do I really want to put myself out there? If you're in this group right now, if you're going to watch this video later as part of this Unlocking Greatness community, I want to say something to all of you right now. You are not participating near at the rate that you should in this community. If you're not going to participate and you're just here to, to, to uh, consume information, I would encourage you to not be a part of the community. Self-select out. Look, at this, this isn't about me sharing information. This is about us living life together and growing together and being on this journey. But for some of you, the reason that you don't want to share is because you're afraid to let other people know who you really are. You're afraid to share your struggles. You're afraid to share the things that you're scared of, the things that you're worried about, the things that tempt you to not be the person that you were called to be. But the reality of the matter is we have to engage. And we have to get over this idea of vulnerability or of fearing vulnerability. Um, an, an, another thing is sometimes there is this societal pressure. Right now, we live in a day and age in which culture says, it's all about you. Figure you out. Go be you. You don't need anybody else. Hey, ladies, you don't need a man. Hey, men, you don't need a woman. Hey, professionals, you can do this on your own. Hey, entrepreneurs, you don't, you don't, you don't need anybody to get to where you want to go. Every single one of those things is a lie from the pit of hell. Every one of them. But society is pressuring you to believe that you can do this on your own. And I'm telling you right now, you cannot. Maybe that's what you need to hear more than anything. You cannot succeed on your own. You cannot grow to the degree that you desire to grow on your own. It's just impossible. You weren't created that way. And so therefore, it's never going to happen. And you may be saying to yourself right now, Ryan, you don't know me. I've got it. I've got the grit. I've got the tenacity. I can do it. You are setting yourself up for absolute disaster. Mark my words. And later on, you're going to come back and you're going to tell me, maybe you won't, but at least in your head, you're going to say to yourself, gosh, when I heard that message, I didn't want to believe it, but gosh, was it true? All right. So I talked about some of the roles out there, talked about some of the common roadblocks uh, that are uh, are in, in our way of uh, accepting the help necessary to transform. And I really made a case for the fact that we need other people in order to grow, to transform, to become great. So finally, I want to talk about, uh, just, just kind of finish with this idea of um, um, what it means to overcome this belief that we can do it on our own. Um. Do you realize that you are limited in your ability to grow because you have not experienced everything necessary in order to get to where you want to go? You know, one of the greatest problems that I face in my profession in trying to get people to work with me is trying to get them to believe that tools, tactics, and strategies will not get them where they want to go. That they need help executing. I can give you 
every guide, every tool, every strategy that I've ever thought up, created, or ripped off from somebody else, borrowed, I can give every single one of them to you to be an incredible business owner, an incredible sales professional. I mean, I, I've got, I, I've got them. I've got all kinds of stuff, but they're just pieces of paper. They're just concepts. They're just ideas. How do I apply them? How do I implement them? How do I execute? How do I do it consistently? I'll tell you how you do it. You align yourself with people that have done it. Even if they're just a baby step ahead of you. You see, we look to these influencers. We look to these recognizable pseudo celebrities online and we're like, oh, I'm going to take their program. Oh, I'm going to do, I'm going to read their books and, and do that. There's a lot of wisdom to be gained, but they are so far removed from you. You need somebody that's in the trenches with you. You want to grow in your marriage? Talk to somebody that's in, that's married that's still working hard to become the best they can be in their marriage. You want to grow as an entrepreneur or a sales professional, find somebody that's gone before you, but is still doing it just like you. We cannot do this on our own. We can learn every single tool, tactic, and strategy necessary, but it's not enough. We have to learn to execute. We have to have people help us to execute. Sometimes it's doing things for us. Other times it's helping us learn how to do the things for ourselves. But it's experiential. It's not, it's not just consumable information. We are limited, significantly limited when we try to do things on our own. Nobody that I have ever seen become successful in any manner has done it by themselves. And, and you're probably saying to yourself, well, of course, I don't, I don't want to do it myself, but I want you to reflect back on your life. Are you actually asking for the help necessary? Are you actually being honest with your communities, with your coach, with your mentor about where you're struggling, what's really holding you back? I mean, really, are you? It's easy to hide things. Nobody will know. I can only, sh I, I'll only share what I, what I want to, what I want them to know. If we don't open our full self up, we're never going to grow into our full self. But when we collaborate, when we seek guidance and engage, boy, the sky's the limit. The sky is the absolute limit. Okay. So. I'm going to land the plane, but I want to land the plane with a few actionable steps for you. Now, I want to I want to preface this by saying I just said that it's going to take more than the consumption of information. But I do think it's helpful to give us some places to start. Okay? So, one of the things that I would do is I would list out, if, if I'm in your spot, and this is something that I do for myself, I would list out all of the areas you, you desire to grow in, where you believe you need to gain some more strength, need to hone, shift, shape, get better at. And then I want you to look out into your network, personal and professional, and I want you to identify one, two, three other people that are strong in the area that you're weak. And I'm going to encourage you to reach out to them and ask them for some guidance. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. Go buy them coffee. Go buy them lunch. And ask them. Don't, don't just ask them without giving them something, but ask them for guidance. Ask them for some support. You know, as a coach, this happens to me a lot where people reach out to me and they're like, hey, can I pick your brain? And I, I always wrestle because this is how I make my money. This is my livelihood. If I just gave away free advice all day long, I'd be broken. My family would never eat. But at the same time, I try to do everything I can to engage in conversation with anybody that needs something. But what I've found is, is that the people that truly desire to change, that, that want to do more than just consume what I'm about to share with them, but they actually want to take action on it, they bring something to the table too. 
And so bring something to the table when you're going to reach out to ask other people for advice, support, or help. Okay, so list out some people. Uh, beyond that, I would say that um, if, if you're going to read a book, if, if you're going to listen to a podcast, if you're going to engage in a course, only do so if you are committed to taking action on what you learned. Because sometimes you can be helped by those resources, even if you don't get to talk with the person through it, which I'm going I'm to talk about in a second. But I would encourage you to only read, watch, or, or, or purchase and engage if you're, if you're truly going to take action. Now, what is one of the best ways to do that? Here, here's the second piece to that. I would encourage you to, to, to buddy up with somebody, to find a friend, to reach out to somebody in this community, to just put yourself out there into this community and say, hey, I want to grow in this area, or hey, I want to read this book. Anybody want to do it with me? Anybody want to read a chapter a day, a, a week? And then talk through ways we can apply that. Create some accountability and some space for that. And finally, I would say, as it relates to taking action, is engage in this community. So some people will see this outside of the community. If you're like, what community are you talking about? And it's our Unlocking Greatness community. It's this private Facebook community. You're watching this live right now. But if you're not and you're watching any of this on the outside later, I would encourage you to learn more about the community. Reach out to me. I'm happy to share a little bit more of what it's about, what we believe, what we value, what we're trying to do. But engage in this community. Start up a conversation. Share your own post. Don't just wait for us to post something and then you to respond. Oh, I like it. Oh, thank you. Like, that's nice, but engage yourself. Ask questions, share ideas, and see where that may take you and where other people may rally around you. Okay, so as a recap, again, as a recap, as, as we're on this journey to transformation of unlocking our greatness, truly transforming into the men and women we believe we're called to be. It's incredibly important that we accept help, that we get over ourselves and over the ideas that we don't need it or we're afraid of it, and we figure out ways to engage in it. Doing it in a professional or structured manner is always going to be a little bit more beneficial than just doing it in a loose or friendly manner. Again, I, I shared some of those pitfalls there. And then ultimately, we need to have commitment in the midst of it. Hopefully that's helpful for you. Again, this has been one of the greatest unlocks in my life is recognizing that I need help and then finding the communities, the people, and the spaces in which I can accept and engage into the help necessary to become all that I was created to be. As you think about this, we're going to be we're going to be moving on to the next step uh, in, in our next uh, session, and we're going to be talking about what it means to become the best me. Who am I? What have I been called to? Who have I been called to? How do I answer those questions, and how do I begin to apply the best me to all that I desire for myself in my life? So with that, thank you guys so much for joining, watching, participating. Let's get engaged. Let's help one another. Let's open up ourselves to be helped by somebody else in this community or in your community. Thank you guys so much. I so much appreciate you. Looking forward to our next session. Until then, go unlock the greatness that God has created you for. Thanks so much.